Come in to the circle of love and justice. Come in to the community of mercy, holiness, and health. Come and you shall know peace and joy. Words of the British author Israel Zwingville. Good morning. Welcome uh, to our annual pride service which, strangely enough, doesn't take place during Pride Month, um, but more uh, to Manchester's own sort of Pride weekend. Uh, I am grateful for your presence here, and I hope that whatever it is that you have come seeking in this space, whether it is a place to share joy and laughter, a uh, place to share, shed some tears uh, and sorrow, a uh, place to find a few words of wisdom, or perhaps simply a chance to rest with the divine, Whatever it is that you seek in this space, I hope you will find it. And for those uh, who uh, for millennia have uh, borne the brunt of society's rejection, I hope that you as well will find some warmth in our community. We come together uh, in our worship, uh, as many Unitarian chapels across the globe do, lighting of a chalice. And today we uh, light our chalice with the words of Reverend Lori Gorhas Klaben. We light our chalice flame for those who have lived their lives in closets of shame, for those who furtively visited the bars where nobody knew your name, for the Stonewall riot and the fierce trans women who fought, for the plague which still takes far too many, too young, and too soon. So many gone. So many never lived to see out gay kids singing on TV, out gay people serving in the military, marriage equality, families formed by intention. We light our chalice flame for all these and for all our siblings surviving, living life out in the open with pride. And so, with our chalice uh, flame lit, we are now invited to join together in song uh, with our first hymn, number 30, in the Purple Book. Uh, if you're listening online, it will appear uh, in the, uh, on the screen. Uh, Brian Wren's, Each Seeking Faith is Seeking Light.
Christ. Let us turn now to a time of prayer. Eternal Presence, thank you for the briskness of life. As it wraps around and twirls through our activities, spinning deep into our being, shaping us, giving birth to who we are. Thank you for the time of quietness and contemplation, the still waters that reflect clearly our thoughts, passions, concerns, and purities. Thank you for the myriad joys we encounter, from bright skies, warm friendship, to the silent flower, whose beauty is not marred by its size. Thank you for the times of trial and the difficulty, and reminding us, as Julian of Norwich has, that all will be well. For though we are strong and have built many castles, we remain as fragile as the flower. Though we are as audacious as the sun, we are as tumultuous as the storms. Let our lives encompass the totality of our being, today and all days. Amen. And you are invited to join with me in reciting our covenant, uh, which again will appear on the screen for those watching and listening online, uh, and is in the order of worship for those who are present here in person. We gather here in sacred fellowship to witness the fullness of our lives and all life, to hold and be held, tell stories and listen, to be renewed and renew the world. We speak with care and patience. We act with gentleness and compassion. We forgive each other and ourselves. In faith that we build beloved community, we renew our covenant today. Our reading today comes from the Reverend Hannah Roberts Villeneuve. People sometimes ask, is pride a protest or a party? And the answer is, of course, yes. And why not? Why not rejoice as we resist, dance as we demand change, celebrate as we create community that delights in all of who we are? So bring all of that with you this morning. Bring your policy demands, bring your glitter, bring your rainbow socks, Bring the emptiness you feel for our siblings gone too soon. Bring your Gloria Estefan remix. Bring your tender hope for change. Bring your most garish eyeshadow. Bring your spirit tattered and battered by a world that seems insistent on choosing fear and hate. Gather up all these things and bring them here to a place where we don't have to shoulder these burdens or celebrate these joys alone. Let us worship together. Words from Hannah Roberts Filney. You are invited to share your um, joys and sorrows, your trials and your triumphs. Uh, if you want to light a candle uh, and say a few words, please, if, if you have words to say, please do come to the microphone so those listening online are able to participate. And if you are online and you wish to have a candle lit for you, please type into the chat box and I will read out uh, whatever message you may have. If you uh, wish to light a candle in silence, that is absolutely 
fine and wonderful, and if you wish to remain seated, know that your presence here is enough. And I wanted to begin by lighting a candle for my wife, Catherine, uh, whose back seized up um, as we were sort of setting out this morning. Um, so she is uh, resting in bed, uh, and I'm grateful for uh, those who have stepped in um, sort of to, to make sure things run as smoothly as possible. And they seem to be running fairly smoothly so far. Um, and of course, a candle for Catherine. I will light two candles uh, at this point. Um, one is for, uh, I'm sorry, one is for all of the um, joys and sorrows that have been spoken and those that have remained within our hearts. Uh, the other is for our speaker, Jay uh, Crawford, who is stuck in North Wales um, and will be unable to join us today. And a thank you to Joe, uh, who was able to communicate that to me completely without, <laughs> without wondering. So the strange, I suppose, byproducts of, um, of living in our, our internet age. So thank you, Joe. We come now to our next hymn, uh, The Secret Pulse of Freedom Throbs, uh, written by Ivan Abero. This is not, to, it's in your hymn book, but it, we're not going to sing it in your hymn book for two reasons. Um, we have... Uh, for many of you know, we're very keen to try and uh, follow copyright laws as carefully as possible. Not just the law, but the spirit of the law. Um, so I wrote to Yvonne uh, asking for her blessing for us to use this uh, hymn. And she wrote back saying yes, uh, but she did request that we use a different tune, uh, which was the tune that she had originally intended it to be sung to, um, the harp that once through Tara's Hall, uh, which you'll find on the back of your order of worship. Um, and then as well, there was um, one word that was changed in the third verse as well. So to accommodate those reasons, we have it printed in your order of worship. The words will appear uh, for those listening online, and I'm going to ask Ugnius to play it through, uh, especially slowly, our uh, sort of in its entirety so we can hear the tune. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. And I always say, well done, uh, after, after experiencing a new hymn. I've always, um, and you've known this for I think seven years now, I've always been uh, impressed and, and very grateful for, uh, for our singers and for our congregation, um, uh, for your uh, tenacity in, in broaching new, new wonders of music and new hymns. So thank you. With our uh, presenter, Jay Crawford, unable to join us today, I suppose it leaves it to me to say a few words um, about Pride, which I have found slightly challenging this year, as it's the first Pride in, I think, seven or more, probably likely more years um, that I have actually not attended, um, barring, of course, last year's Pride March, which was, uh, which was canceled for very understandable reasons. And, of course, technically, um, as those uh, may be familiar, the, this year's Pride March was also canceled, and what was brought in was not called a Pride March, but was called an Equality March, um, which, is, which is wonderful. And uh, they sought to emulate that sort of back-to-roots uh, back sentimentality. Um, there was, again, for those familiar with the sort of uh, inner workings of, of Manchester Pride as the charity, Manchester Pride events, um, which sort, of, which sort of produces a lot of the big weekend uh, will, will sort of, I suppose, be understandable and perhaps sympathetic to uh, those who marched in an alternative pride, uh, which was called the Manchester Pride protest. But it's very difficult, to, you know, when I was saying, oh, some of our congregation is going to march in a protest against pride, <laughs> I had to be very clear that I was not talking about protesting, but obviously um, the, uh, some of the challenges uh, faced, uh, say challenges faced by the administration, but challenge, you know, decisions that were made uh, for which many people have been unhappy. And then I, do, I don't want to sort of uh, say anything incorrect um, on something of which I've studied, but uh, feel like I would I would bog down in certain legalese. Um, but what I did want to touch upon was it was called the Equality Marches, uh, what they had. Uh, yesterday. And when I was reading through some of the comments uh, from you know, people, uh, there, was the ex there was an expression that was, you know, pri you know, pride is for everyone. And as much as there is a certain element of a sentiment that, that I agree with, and it's a very sort of heartwarming experience that we can all participate in pride, we can all, uh, you know, have actions within pride. I don't is for everyone. I wouldn't go so far as to say pride should be for everyone. An expression, you know, when I hear that for myself, that expression falls in line with the all lives matter statement, which is, you know, not untrue. All lives matter, yes. But that is in this sort of uh, essence, that is in some sort of idyllic state. And we live in the real world. We live in uh, what Plato would describe as the accidents of the world, the reality of the world, where things aren't equal, where things aren't distributed uh, appropriately, where uh, people still experience aggression uh, and violence simply for who they are. So perhaps equality marches in that aspirational sense of, yes, let's, let's get to that point. But let us be aware as well that we are not there yet. And that's why it's so important to have that back to roots uh, mentality when it comes to Manchester Pride. Sometimes I use the term parade, sometimes I use the word march. And I'm very aware you know, of the distinction in my, in my mind between those two. And we need both, as we heard in our reading, when asked if pride 
is uh, if pride is a celebration or a, a protest, the answer should be yes. Because in a way that celebration is the protest, it is the affirmation of we are here. We are still here. And maybe I am slightly incorrect as well when I say that pride shouldn't be for everyone. Because there are those who are still facing abuse globally. LGBTQ rights are in a severe minority of many countries. Countries where people still face the death penalty for being gay. Pride should be for them. And for those uh, who are a privileged level of society, it should be about helping them. So it's an equality as an aspiration, and it's for everyone in the sense that those of us with power need to care for those who are without. And as serious as all of that sounds, it's all the more important to sing just a bit more joyfully and a bit more loudly from time to time. Amen. Let us return now to a time of prayer with these words of the Reverend uh, M. Susan Milnor. Eternal God, and spirit of life. We are grateful for the companionship of hearts and minds seeking to speak the truth in love. We are grateful for our heritage, for those before us whose prophetic words and deeds make possible our dreams and our insight. We are grateful for the gift of life itself Mindful that to become mindful that to respect life means both to celebrate what it is and to insist on what it can become. May we always rejoice in life and work to cultivate a sense of its giftedness. But may we also heed the call to transformation and growth. May we find in ourselves the strength to face our adversities, the integrity to name them, and the vision to overcome them. Honor and pride those heroes of our past, but may we also keep company with the fallen, the broken, and the oppressed. For in the dazzling of noonday's heat, and in the star-studded shimmering of night's rich blackness, we are then. Amen. So we now enter into a period of silence for reflection meditation, contemplation, and personal prayer.
Ignis. A few notices before we conclude our service. Uh, if you're in need of pastoral care, uh, you can write to me at minister at coffeechapel.org.uk. And you can write as well if you, would, if you wish to participate in a service, such as providing a reading um, or otherwise. And if you've just joined us, you're able to um, uh, join our mailing list, again, by writing to me at minister at crossstreetchapel.org.uk. Uh, there will be tea and coffee available for those uh, in uh, worship in here physically uh, today. And those who are listening online, I'm afraid you'll have to make your own uh, or go to a cafe. Um, so do join us for tea and coffee after this service if you are here. Uh, and we're grateful as well for any donations that can assist the mission of the chapel. Uh, we have available a retiring collection and envelopes uh, for, the, uh, for those wishing to participate in gift aid. Um, if you are a UK taxpayer, you can uh, donate online at tinyurl.com slash crossstreetdonate. Um, or you can contact me about setting up a standing order. So we come now to our final hymn. In the purple book, number 42, From the Light of Days Remembered. for the music. Thank you to uh, Peter and Joe for greeting. Um, thank you to Emma for the IT. Uh, we thank Laura, uh, who's preparing coffee, and Joe, who will uh, help to serve it. Um, my apologies if I've left anyone out. Um, thank you uh, to all of you for creating and sharing worship today. We close with the words of the Reverend Elizabeth Ketchum. With gratitude for the freedom to be our true, authentic selves, may we live the spirit of pride. With the courage that comes from challenging fear, may we live the spirit of pride. With so, for those who could not be here with us today, and in honor of those who died of AIDS or who have lost their lives, may we live the spirit of pride. 
with grief for those whose pain was unbearable and who left us too soon. May we live the spirit of pride. Looking ahead to the justice still withheld, may we live the spirit of pride with the confidence that a sense of community banishes isolation and loneliness. May we live with the spirit of pride with the rainbow flag flying high, a sense of beloved community among us and joy that comes from making new connections. May we live the spirit of pride. Amen. Go in peace.